this is the poncho that I made for myself and I designed these uh, fringes and my daughter wanted the same one and this is the one we've been working on now this uh, the, the, the cream fringes won't go with this so we're going to put black fringes on uh, but we this is how far we got and it's going to look very nice I find it very flattering I wear it with my blue jeans so it's been in the wash in the washing machine thrown in hung on the line at least twice so it looks very good okay let's continue hi there and welcome thank you for joining me I'm going to post a little clip me wearing this poncho because that's what we are replicating today i'm going to show you a tutorial where i've made this uh, poncho the same i'm wearing but just a little different color for my daughter and i have used four nearly four of these balls of 100 gram double knit i have 70 grams left with which we're now going to do the edging around and Obviously, the tutorial starts at the beginning. <laughs> and um, I've used two of these 100 gram black double knit. The only problem is that to show double knit on the camera is very dark. So I've used the contrasting color here and there. I've adjusted the light so you can clearly see when I'm working with this brown or just where I used a piece of black because that's what you'll be doing if you are using the same colors and um, yes the thing is that I'm not going to show you the fringes in black because that's going to be very difficult so I am going to do a bit of that on this one in cream to help you <laughs> but this one is going to have black fringes Yes, so I do apologize if in the tutorial the light is a bit white and my daughter came in and she said, Oh, mommy, your hand is blindingly white on the screen. I said, yes, but look, they're not here to look at my hand. They're here to look at what I'm showing them and they need to see there. And you can clearly see because the light is so bright, you can clearly see me working with brown and where I do a little bit only of the black so I'm apologizing if the light was too bright on my hand for you so but we're here for the yarn okay okay so join me as we're going to make this and um, I will post in the end uh, some photographs of my daughter wearing this with her blue jeans and black boots that comes right just below the knee she turned 21 during uh, not during lockdown as we were sort of phasing out and uh, she went with her grandmother now recently and she chose to buy a pair of black boots that comes up to just below the knees so now she doesn't really have anything in her cupboard clothing wise that goes with it so I said well we can make a poncho and it is winter here by us in South Africa it is end of July I think we still have August one month of winter before spring hits and then she can wear this because this black stripe beautifully picks up the black jean the black boot and then the blue jean now I I like to wear this with my jeans as you saw in the little clip that um, I'm showing you and yes I sometimes wear a blue scarf or a blue uh, little something with it and it, it goes beautifully I don't have anything now otherwise on as in the little clip that I showed you as well you won't be able to see the actual garment you know sometimes people display something that they've made but there's either too much hair in the way or, or other accessories and you can't really see the thing that you want to make so Anyway, keep me company as we go through this tutorial. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And we'll be doing more Granny Square whatever because I am 
in love with granny squares. I just love anything that I can make out of a granny square, I will. Okay, let's get going. <laughs> So let's just go through the yarn that I used. I bought the Himalaya anti-pilling every day, 100% anti-pilling acrylic. So it's 100% acrylic. And it says 5 millimeter. I used 4 millimeter. My favorite is 4 millimeters, 250 meters in a 100 gram ball. And that's about it. I love this yarn because you can throw it in the washing machine, the garment that you make out of it, and nothing happens to it. And it even says on here, uh, resistant to forming fuss balls due to stress of wear and washing. Projects maintain that just finished look. Love it. Then I bought, you can call this known hand brand, because I've actually bought this at checkers it's a double knit and it says it recommends let me just let's just focus it it recommends a four millimeter hook it says approximately 250 meters there and this is acrylic and it's Manufactured here from imported, using imported acrylic new materials. And it is made in South Africa. So this is bought at Checkers. So this would be your regular, any brand, black double knit. So we're going to create four squares. And let's just start with the first one. Not the first one. I'm going to show you how I do it. My favorite hook, four millimeter. I know there's fancy hooks out there. I just like this one. Make a little slip knot like this. And one, two, three, four, five chains. Connect with just a slip stitch to form a circle and then five chains again. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is going to be a double crochet and two chains and now I'm going to make three double crochets this will then be a corner you'll see just now one double crochet the second double crochet and this is US terms not UK terms third double crochet that two chains one two chains and in that same circle and I'm keeping the straggler end working it in as I go three double crochets one two, three double crochets, one, two chains, turn, because now we are making a corner, one, two, three, double crochets two chains this is my favorite the granny square one 
two double crochets and now you see we meet up there we meet up and I prefer to work on a process of elimination instead of trying to find the third one I just go there's a double crochet double crochet double crochet one two chains so that must be the top of my three chains instead of going to find where is the third one I just find it easier and I just push through and make a little slip stitch to connect them and there's my little square I like to have those five chains in the middle gives me more room to move I know this is difficult to see but I prefer well as far as I can to make the tutorial in the color of the project so now I am hopping over to the corner so into the corner make a single crochet which is the bottom of my double crochet and two more chains so that will now serve as my double crochet two more double crochets two chains and three more double crochets and that will finish off my corner now one chain and now we're going to do another corner three double crochets two chains three double crochets just your average granny square so if this is your first time watching this or anything like this then this is new but otherwise there's so many tutorials on how to make a granny square and if you're familiar with a granny square then keep me company we have 16 rows to make in this color so there is our second corner three double crochets two chains three double crochets and I've made one chain and that takes us to our next corner we are going to repeat that three double crochets one two chains and three double crochets finished the corner one chain to take us to the next corner and three double crochets two chains three double crochets there we go One, two chains and one, two, three, double crochet. One chain to take us to the next corner, but the next corner is done already. So now we're just going to slip stitch in the top. There's a double crochet. There's a double crochet. By process of elimination that must be the top of our double crochet so just slip stitch beautiful what is more beautiful than a granny square okay 
Now, you know the way that I like to do a granny square. I'm going to slip stitch in the back of that double crochet, top of the back. So not through both, no, only through the back. Just a slip stitch. So I'm crawling along here to get to the corner. Into the corner, make a single crochet. And that's the bottom of my double crochet and that's another one another one that's my double crochet and now another two one two two chains and turn the corner and one two three double crochets a chain to take us to the next one chain space where I will make three double crochets in that one chain space one two three one chain to take us to the corner and in the corner it's going to be again three double crochet two chains three double crochet in that corner let's just do it together hey come on like that one double crochet two double crochet three double crochet one two chains One, two, three double crochet, one chain. In the next one chain space, we make three double crochets. One, two, three one chain space takes us to the next corner and it's going to be you guessed it three double crochets two chains three double crochets one two chains and one two three one chain space so let's just see so that's how you're going to continue in every one chain space you make your three double crochet one chain space to get you to the corner and there you go so I am going around let's just do this together one two i can hear the little birdies outside three one chain take us to the corner three double crochet one two chains one, two, three double crochet, one chain to take us to the next one chain space, make our three double crochets into that one chain space, one chain take us to the corner, connect to the top of the third double crochet and I do that by process of elimination one two and then that must be the top and a slip stitch and again we are just going to crawl along through the back loop just a slip stitch 
through the back loop just a slip stitch and into the corner a single crochet with two chains and that forms my first double crochet and now you are just going to continue like that until you have 16 rows in this color then we're going to meet up again and we're going to do some black that black stripe okay so see you in a little bit at row 16 at the end of row 16 we'll meet up at the end of row 16 there we go and I'm on row 16 and I seem to be running out of yarn so I've got to go over to another ball oops oops so let's just pull up a little bit and what I like to do especially if I'm continuing in the same color is just to make a magic knot and you know how to do that many of you know some don't know just make a knot pull tight and this one is knotted around this and just pull tight pull tight and then I pull 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 take your scissors see that little knot there come right up to it like that I'm told this will not break so haven't had it break on me yet okay and then I continue and there is the knot to see so I'm just going to get through that there and you can hardly tell that I've made a knot and there's nothing to work in no ends to work in, which is the best. Okay. At the end of this row, we're going to do a color change. So, I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay, so we're ending off. I'm coming to the end of my row 16 one chain and one two so that must be my third double crochet and I just slip stitch there you go and then I am going to just crawl along to the corner like normal and then I'm going to cut off like so I'm just going to just it's nice and tight like that okay now that is 16 16 of these rows and the way I remember I mean you can count it any way you want to some people count like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen I like to just go because it's a granny square 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 clusters means I've done 16 rows. Only in a granny, I'm sure, not in anything else. Changing color to black. What we're going to do now is a border like this. We're going to do two rows of black and then another row in this brown color. So I'm just going to show you how I changed color, or how I do it. Again, just my over and under slip knot. And it is in black, and I've changed my light so that it will be on it. Let's see. I'm picking any corner, but not the corner that I've just ended in pick any other corner. I'm going to start by making a, a single crochet by making a single on the screen come single crochet just take that straggler end bring it this way single crochet and then one two chains and then so that's my first double crochet like we've been doing for so many times second double crochet third double crochet one two chains and you really can't actually see because the color is just too dark It's a problem to work with this at night, so I try and only do it in the daytime. But fortunately, I only have two rows to go. There we go. It's going to look exactly like the previous row. It's just going to be black. And I've worked in the straggler end at the back. And then I'm just going to... Take my tapestry needle or darning needle or yarn needle, whatever you want to call it, and just skip one and just take, put the threaded, thread it through the end, the back of these loops. Once, I've already done it once. Now this is the second time and then this will be my third time and I only do it three times. Cut it off carefully, cut it off. Let's see, yes, now I've done one chain, and now it's going to be business as usual. Three double crochet. one chain and three double crochet in the next one chain space like we've been doing remember this is to wear with lovely black boots and a blue jean so that's why i've put in this stripe just to pick up those black boots. This is now making your own wardrobe. There we go. My daughter have two other ponchos, but they didn't have any black in them, and she doesn't really have black. But because the boots is black, she needed a poncho that just picked up that black. Okay, so I'm going to meet you.
back where we now started off here and to meet you here because we need to do two rows of this okay see you in a moment I just want to show you what I'm going to do when I get to the corner where I've ended off I'm just going to double crochet over that and sort of work in one and then two come on that's one and then my second what is happening see but this can happen to anybody so I'm showing you now what is happening here like this keep going off the screen two three this is what I do and then one two chains and keeping the straggler here just going one two three double crochets one chain now you can see at the back it is worked in sort of so what I'll do with that is to work its way down to there work its way down to the back of these back loops So that's once. I'm gonna go a second time. Just skip the first one. Just go around. Second time. Now the last time. Skip the first one. Just go around. There we go. three times worked in very neatly I like it to be worked in very neatly and then we just continue Focus, focus. Okay. I just wanted to show you that corner, what I do. And then I will see you at the other corner. Now, it doesn't really help me showing you, but this is what you've been doing all along. At the end of a row, three double crochet, one chain. And one, two, and you just slip stitch into the top of that double crochet. But now you absolutely cannot see this because this is so dark. Then we're going to just crawl along. With a slip stitch. We're just going to crawl along like we've done all the last 16, which is now 17 rows. And we're going to do a single crochet in the corner and two and three that's my double crochet and second and third like you've been doing two chains and Two, 
three double crochet one chain <laughs> nearly impossible to see that's what it is with black anyway we're going to have two black rows so see you at the end of this black row and that's the end of the black for now so see you let's just finish off with a black one double crochet two and three double crochet one chain and just one two and that is the top and a slip stitch connecting it and I'm just going to cut it off you can I'm going to crawl to the corner like we've done any other time pull it tight wait put the white behind it there you can see okay and just work that in so now i only need to do one more row in brown let's just work our way down look this is even difficult for me to see just catch the back ends and work your way down now three times Let's just do this. So, like so now. Once. Skip the first one. Twice. And. This is the third time, just working in the backs of these. Okay, there we go. Now, to look like this, we need one more row of brown. So let's connect the color. Choose, I've worked that in now. Choose any corner, any other corner, a little slip knot, pick a corner. And do the last row do a single crochet and one two chains and that's my first du uh, double crochet second third while working in the little straggler end two chains turn a corner and one, two, three, one chain, and into the next chain, one chain space. What we've been doing all this time, this is row 19, so 16 rows in brown. Row 17 and 18 is black, and row 19 is brown. And I'm going to see you at the end of this row. Okay, there we go.
see you just now. Let's just end off this row 19. One more. Double crochet. One chain space and one, two. Connecting into the top of that. Double crochet. just in this one off here or you can go to the corner what I I did it like this now but you can I've done this before where I just thread it through the back loop like this so that when I'm going to work in that back in that corner it's there okay now what we have is a completed square and you just see there's nothing to work in here nothing to work in here because we've already done it one two ends and because we've worked this in as we went i can just snip this off And then just work this in. Okay. And then you need to make another three squares like this because we need four. Only four squares to make a poncho. What a miracle. Four squares can become a garment. I'm not working this one in because that is... It ended there and I, and I just crawled there. So when I'm going to sew it together, I'm going to put on an edge and the neck and I'll work it in then. Okay, so now we have... Let me just see if I can adjust this camera a little bit back without going off the desk. There it is, just a moment, like so, and I've done these and I've already worked in their ends, two, three, four, this is my fourth one, and we now need to sew this together because this needs to be turned like this and then this one you can fold it in half if you like but this one needs to be connected to that one like this and this needs to be sewn together so let's see how we're going to do that. Just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply going to make a knot here. I'm going to tie those two together because to me that's very secure. One. Two, two knots. Now this is what it looks like. This is that's where I made the double knot, and I'll work it in later. 
but this is how I'm going to stitch it together. And this is the right side, right side, right side, right side, up. And I am simply going to do this. And I took three lengths of this. This yarn was once, twice, three times the length. So that I think that should be enough. I want to try and keep this as flat as possible. Let's see. Let me just show you. I'm going to do a few of these. I have no idea what you call this stitch. If you know, please put it in the comments. Like this. And I'm just going to go through like that. Join those two one chain spaces. Firm. I just put it firm, not too tight, but just nice and firm. This is going to be a garment, and my daughter is going to wear it, sit in class at the university. She's going to maybe sit in a restaurant when she wears it, sit at her desk and study. So it needs to be, you know, well done. You need to make sure I'm saying it together right. See, like that. Just this one chain spaces. So beautiful that looks. I love it. It looks very neat. Now you see that is two rows. This is going to look like two rows, and that's going to look like two rows. But you'll see in the end, I'll probably lay it out on my bed, because then you can really see the big picture. Like that. Second to the second double crochet. Attaching the two together and the third to the third. I'm not really very fast, but I need to be neat and tidy, which is what I'm going for here. Like that. See, this is what the end result should look like. So I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to show you what to do next. So meet you there. Okay, so one side, I have finished one side. See, this is what it looks like. All along. Now, this is the one block, like a diamond shape in front of me. And this one I said you can fold in half and then you sew it here. Now you're going to take, sorry, I'm out of space here. Now you're going to take another one, another block, and it's like folding it in half. This is the right side, that's the wrong side. This is the right side. And you're going to put it there. Let me see if I can make this nice and clear. So, this is what it's going to look like. You have to, let me just see if I can lift this, if I can lift this camera up so you can see what's going to happen. Okay, let me see if I can lift this camera up to show you. This is what's going to happen. Now we're going to sew this end. See? And then when you lift this up, the other block is going to come here. So I'm going to quickly sew that one up the way I've done and meet you back here. Now I've turned it over. 
This is the wrong side. This is the right side. Wrong side on the inside, right side on the outside. This is the wrong side. And now I'm just going to sew this end and that end together. So I'm holding this in my hand so you can see the big picture starting to form. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. This is the poncho. So now we need to do the neck. So let me just pause for a moment. Just show you what it looks like. And then just let me pause for a moment so you can so I can show you what the original looks like. Remember we're copying this one. This is my one that I made for myself. And mine has blue. Mine is only in this, what, what is this color? Mud. Four squares. There you can see it's sewn together. Mine had a blue edging and cream colored. Cream colored fringe, which I will show you how to make. But um, now we are going to tackle the six rows of neckline on my daughter's one. So, okay, so let's get to that point. So the whole neckline is going to be single crochets. And you can basically start anywhere. I do my slip knot like usual. Doesn't matter where you start, but I want to start on a shoulder, on the shoulder. I don't want to start at the cleavage or at the back. I want to start on a shoulder. So let me start. It's just going to be single crochets all along. Are we focusing? There we are. Single crochet. Take the straggler to this side. Single crochet. On the top of the first double crochet. A single crochet. And another one. And as I'm going, I'm working in my straggler. Just halfway up to there because remember I wanted to come back single crochet like that now I'm just going to take that out of the way and continue single crochet single crochet and around and around we go and where she'll stop only she will know <laughs> let's just quickly do this so all i need to do is to show you how that the front and the back is done There we go. I think it's time for a lovely cuppa. Now, my daughter didn't want creamy colored fringes on her poncho. But obviously, I can't show you the fringe in black because you can't see. So, I will use... A contrasting or even cream to show you how to make the fringe but I'll be doing hers the end product you'll see will have black fringes on this poncho I can't even think if cream would look good see what we're doing here a row of single crochet 
So let's just do this. Single crochet, single crochet in each one. One in each one. In the seat. There we go. Top of the three double crochets. Each one, one in the single chain space. This black just eats up. See, that, that must be worked in later. So, let's just do this one. Single crochet, single crochet, and single crochet. Just have a good look here. Because now we're going into a corner. And it's going to be, where am I? Here. I'm going to pick up this corner one. Pick it up. Pick up this. Can you see what I'm picking up here? That corner. Pick it up. Yarn over. And I'm picking up this corner. See, pick it up, and it's going to be just pulling it nice and firm. It's like decreasing, they must all come together on one. See, like that. Now, the very next one is the top of that double crochet through and a single crochet. Top of the next one and a single crochet and I'll show you now we just get away from the corner a bit and then I'll show you what it looks like I want the neck to be plain she likes things that are plain okay, let's just do this and then have a look here can you see so let me show you the blue one again to see if you can see what we've done there. What we've done there is we have put a single crochet on the top of each one but in the corner. Now because it's a contrasting color you can see it clearly. There's your three chain three double crochet cluster. Your two chains, three double crochet cluster, which is your corner. And then there's this corner, and then there's that corner. So when you come along here, first, second, third, you pick up the corner, you pick up that corner, you pick up that corner, and then yarn over and pull through all of them together. It's like you're decreasing turning one, two, three stitches into one. And then you're going up again. One in every stitch. And you're going to do this every time. Next time you come around, you're going to do the same in the three corners. You're going to pick up corner, corner, three stitches in that dip. And you're going to decrease it to one. And then you're going to continue one into each one. Front and back. This is what's going to happen in the corner. So let's continue. Let's see. Where are we? Okay. So. Single One in every stitch and then you are just going to do now I haven't decreased anything only that corner where I where three becomes one in that dip I call it a dip <laughs> you can call it what you like there 
one in every stitch. Okay, so I'm going to continue like this. And I will meet you in this corner. I'll meet you here. I thought I just want to show you in a contrasting color what should happen. A double crochet, not double crochet, single crochet single crochet and then come on focus now so before we're going to do this in the corner pick up that one corner so pick up the one corner go look for the next corner pick it up and then the third corner and pick that up So, but then I'm going to just pull it nice and tight, yarn over and through all of that. You see, so it becomes those three corners, you can see it, one, two, th the three corners become one. And then into the next one, you do a single crochet and you carry on. Okay, so now let me show you in a contrasting color, this is what it looks like. See, but now let me pull that out. And then show you in the proper color. So I'm just going to continue because I just thought maybe... I should show you in the in a contrasting color. So there we go. Single crochet. Single crochet. Then corner, pick it up, pick up the next corner. And pick up the next corner that corner just pick it up just pull it nice and tight now one two three four all through all four and then into the next stitch a single crochet and into the next stitch top of the next double crochet a single crochet and you continue like we've been doing. See, now you are forming this. This is say this is the front. Now we're going to go around to the back again. So we're going to continue with one. This is this neck we are working on at the moment. So we are continuing with one single crochet. In every stitch like this there we go single crochet in every stitch very neat because this is going to be the neckline of your poncho you want it to be neat well you want the whole thing to be neat but I mean there's one place where you don't want anything to be less than right and proper. It's at your neckline. Okay, I'm going to meet you. I'm on my way to the shoulder, isn't it? I'm going to meet you here. Let's just pick it up. And here I am. 
single crochet now it's going to be a slip stitch and then chain one and a single crochet in the same stitch right just show you again sorry if I was off camera there or not totally where I should be then split there so it's going to be a chain then it was a slip stitch now it's a chain and then in the same stitch it's going to be a single crochet and continue single crochet single crochet i mean if you think you might miss that as your starting line you can put a stitch marker in there but i mean i don't bother because i know i know it's there so and on we go this is row two Mine was six rows. I think you should make as many rows as you feel comfortable. Do you think this is six rows is good? I thought six rows was good. Didn't want it wider. And I didn't want it narrower. Just wanted six rows was going to do the trick for me. There we go. Nearly there. Because I do start on the shoulder. It's beautiful. It's very sturdy, the single crochets. Okay, I'll meet you in the corner. Let's continue. So now it's a single crochet. See, this is where we are. Single crochet. This is row two and we're doing a single crochet. Now I'm going to pick up three and they're going to become one. So it's this one, one, two, and the first one of the next side. Let's call it side. So there's four on the hook and it becomes one. And into the next single crochet one and there we go so in every corner I'm going to pick up three and it will become one I will quote unquote decrease it it's just that I mean there's nothing else you can do in a corner because you you can't just continue you have to form that V Okay, so now and here we go. Continue single crochet, still on row two, on our way to the second V, which will turn out to be either your front or your back. Actually, with my poncho, there's no front and back. I mean, I can wear it either way, there's no telling. What side is the front and what side is the back because they're both the same. So, okay, I'll meet you in the corner again. Okay, nearly there. Let's do this. One in each, a single crochet. This is the corner. This is our V. Now. I'm just. It's. This one. 
It's the second one from the corner. Second one, the corner, the, the two from the corner, and the one after the corner. Those three become one. So, one, and then the next one. Corner one, and just around the corner, the first one out of the corner. And those four become one. Like that. And then the next one. Here we go. With our single crochet again single crochet single crochet there we go you see how that is forming this is row two already and there needs to be six rows okay so i must continue around to that corner that's the other corner lying there waiting for me. See you at that corner. I'm so focused on see you at the corner I forget. There's the shoulder. So it's one and another one and then the last one. And then just a slip stitch to connect and a chain up and in the same stitch a single crochet and then a chain one ah, single crochet not chain one and a single crochet see row three I think this might be seven rows instead of six because if that's three and three I don't know I'll see when I get there but this so now it is a single crochet in each stitch and we meet you at the V but this is basically what's going to happen every round you're going to go around a single crochet in every stitch when you get around to here it's going to be a single crochet a slip stitch a chain up and then a single crochet in the same stitch and around you go again and every time you get to a corner a corner a V you're going to decrease by three stitches you're going to take that V three stitches and make it into one. That is what's going to happen. So around we will go. At this rate, I think I might make it seven rows instead of six. Or am I just, oh no, I don't know why. Maybe because this yarn, remember the other one has a blue neckband. That yarn might be a little bit thicker, even though it was double knit. Might be a little bit thicker, which means six rows was quite enough. Whereas with this one, I might feel, I'll see what it looks like after six. I might feel seven is necessary because this is looking very thin narrow border narrow neck band okay are we nearly in the corner in the V nearly in the V I've talked myself into that V and go so one Just need to see where is it. One, two, three. So it's another one. The 
and I'm going to take one, two, three, and they become one. And I pull it nice and firm, tight, and the next one is just a single crochet, and away we go. single crochet all right that's the v the v is taking on shape so now i'm going to go around to the next v and then around to the shoulder and i'll meet you at the shoulder okay let's see this is the end of row three focus there we go now i'm going to put one in there and then i'm just going to slip stitch to over where is that top one there i'm going to slip stitch to over there and pull it tight because this is the shoulder i don't want it, I want it to be seamless. So, chain up and single crochet in the same stitch. And there we go again. See? Hmm. <laughs> single crochet. I nearly said seamless. Got seamless on, on the brain now. So, this is row four. Definitely looks to me like, looks to me like I'll have to put another two rows. Okay, so I am finishing off row six and I've actually called my daughter, thrown this thing over her head, let her try it on in six rows is enough now i'm just going to do a slip stitch to end it off that is the end come on like so okay be careful don't want to nip this See, that's the only thing that shows, but that is on the shoulder. So now, what it looks like, that can go that way. Front and back, let me just... See, this is, just move this camera a little bit, there we go, see this is what it looks like, and this is actually fine, it's very sturdy, this is for winter obviously because it's double knit and she's going to be wearing a polo neck warm thing underneath and that's what that came out like see just like the original blue one mine i'll just work this in it actually looks worse on the camera than it does in real life in real life you can hardly see this especially after i've woven this in and you can't tell which is the front and which is the back. Let's just do that. You can't tell which is the front and which is the back. There we go. 
anyway so now we need to take the end and add one row right around the bottom and the way I did it with mine was a double crochet in every stitch in this brown one double crochet in every single stitch all the way around even across here one double crochet in every stitch but I'm thinking I'm going to make it for hers a double crochet chain one double and then skip one so double crochet chain one skip one and into the next one a double crochet chain one skip one into the next one double crochet so that is what needs to come around the edge and I need to work in my ends and then I'll see you again when that is done now I'll see you when I start that so I'm going to work in my ends and when I start my next round I'll meet you there okay so what remains to be done is the last row because I want to keep the design element here that it looks like you can see two rows and it looks like there's two rows spacing of the, or what we call that main color, two rows of the black line, and then it's evenly spaced. So I want to keep that. I don't want just one row and then the black fringe. So I want another row. of. But what we're going to do here is I want to um, put a single crochet on every one. And then just a one chain space where there is a one chain space and then three double crochet and a one chain space now you can do this a few ways you can either do the next row a double crochet in every stitch which is what I've done with my original one or you can um, do it one a double crochet one chain skip a chain and do it uh, double crochet in the next one you know um, or you can do it the way I'm going to do it now and let's see I'm doing my slip knot I'm sorry I did that off camera let's just try and stay on camera okay, like so. I adjusted the lighting because obviously the yarn is very dark and but now the color sort of I think you know blows out on my hands so I <laughs> my, my daughter walked in and said oh mommy what's wrong with your hands you it's like white lights I said well we're not here for the hands we're here for the crochet and with this bright light on it you can clearly see the brown yarn okay that was a single crochet with two chains like we've done so many times before and we are doing another single crochet and i'm going to do two chains and a single crochet and a single crochet okay I wonder so let's try I'm going to try and see if I can do this now not in the first one I'm going to skip one I'm going to do two one there and one there and then a one chain space and then three double crochets one on each you could have just gone and done another row of granny as well you know and one chain so 
one. And it's two double crochet, three double crochet, and a chain. That's pretty simple, huh? Hey? Very simple. And there we go. Now it's going to be like that up until the corner. Well, there is no corner because I'm going over the shoulder, coming down. If this is the back, then I'm just going to go round here to, <clears throat> to the corner, pardon me, and meet up at the front, tip again, go round over the, what would be the shoulder, and come and meet you back here. So I will meet you at this corner again. See you there. Let me just show you what I did here. When you get here, I see that I have, this is how we've gone. Let me just do that so we can see it on the better on the white. Three double crochet, one chain, three double crochet, one on the top of each of the previous row. And then we get here. But now what I want to do here, what I don't want to do is just make chains to get to this cluster. So I'm going to just chain one, three double crochet, chain one, like I did before. And then I'm just going to put one double crochet and put another double crochet. And then straight into those three. So for those, for that little bit there, it's going to look different, but I seriously doubt if you will just pick that up with the naked eye because this is going to land right next to this big black fringe and all we're really doing here is creating height so I just that's my little solution there is do one chain put one in there and then one in each of those and then I just continue as normal one chain and one in each of those three double crochets that's right i can't wait to show you how to do the fringe how i did mine i've been stopped in yarn shops a number of times where people ask me can I take a photograph where did you get this and actually you know some of the most most amazing patterns happen as an accident I didn't want to use just normal fringes because I think my experience is if I just throw it in the washing machine it just messes it up then you have to wash it by hand so I don't want to wash it by hand every time, especially if it's a lovely acrylic garment that you can just throw in the wa uh, washing machine and hang it up and it keeps its shape and form and everything. And um, I don't even wash my yarn garments that often. I mean, it's not something that gets that dirty. If it's dirty, it's dirty, but if it's not... It's not like the stuff you wear on your body. Anyway, so I had to come up with a way of making with chains a fringe that wouldn't tangle. So I just came up with this, to me, easy solution. And it just happened to look great. And I love it. I can't wait to show you how to do it. How I did it. And it is really so simple okay, so i'm going to meet you at the next tip look at the tip do call it the tip see you at the tip 
I just want to show you what I did here. See, this is just, I think this is on the shoulder. Re remember with this one, I did this. I said three and a chain space. And I did one there and went into that space immediately and did another three. And that's fine. So what I did here was I did the three. Did one in the corner, one chain, and then just did one on each of those. Just so that it looks, it, it you really won't pick this up once she starts wearing this. Because this is going to be below the hip. And you have this the big black fringe that is really drawing the attention. So you're not really going to see this row. No. Of course, it must be neat, right? But you can see what I mean, hey? Okay, so let's continue. Here we are. So on the corner, it's three, one chain space, and then again. I did. Now you see, it's always, let me see, why is this difficult? Because I worked something in the back. No, 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 no. Yarn over, and then we're making a double crochet and then yarn over and making another double crochet and then we are going straight into the corner we're skipping one so we're only doing two we're doing what we did at the other corner one two chains let me just get the other corner so i can show you Remember what we did here, two, two chains, two double crochet, and I skipped one, and then in those two I made a double crochet. You could, you don't have to skip that one, you can do, you can, you can put a double crochet there if you want. I just decided not to, so. And then we're going around the corner, and it's another double crochet, and still another one in the corner. So that's our corner. And then those two, I'm going to skip that one, and then just go straight into the middle one. There we go. And then there. One chain space, jump over, go into the three double crochets, which is my double crochet, quote unquote, cluster. And it looks like this. Okay, and now we're just going to continue what we've been doing. And when we get to the end of one block, beginning of another block, I will just use my imagination again. Probably one, two, three, go into that corner, one chain, and go directly into the top of the three double crochets. I think that... It looked nice on that other corner, so I think I'm going to do the same here. Yes. Okay. So see you at the other V. Tip, whatever we call it, eh? Okay, so I'm ending off. Getting to the last of this. One double crochet there. One chain. And one, and this is one, and a second one there, I'm just going to put one there, and then I'm going to skip one and just make a single, a slip stitch in the top of that one, see, and I'm going to work it in, and then we're going to start with the fringe, very excited. See you in a moment. 
Okay, so now this is what I've got left. I haven't weighed this, but before I started doing the edge, which is now done, I had 70 grams left of that 100 gram ball. And this is what it looks like. So I've just created that bit of height. Now we're going to do the cherry on the cake, which is the best part, the fringe. The beautiful fringe. Now remember the fringe on my own, let me just quickly, on my poncho is cream. It's this cream. So now we're going to do this, but I'm going to, I've got a piece of scrap. Not scrap, what is it? I'm just going to use this color. This is nice and bright. And I'm going to show you how to make this fringe. So, let's just put that to one side. My, this fringe was actually made uh, with uh, pure gold. I don't know who of you know this brand, but I love working with this. It is super soft. It's a double knit. There's lots and lots of meters on one ball. 258 meters four millimeter hook my favorite hook anyway so this is what i used the creamy color i used for the fringes on my poncho but remember hers is getting black fringes and i'm just going to use this it's also a uh, pure gold but what is this bright peach it's not Orange, I don't know what you call it. I actually don't have the label anymore. So, to do the fringe that you've seen, let's turn this around. Let me just move this camera slightly. Okay. And this is how it goes. Remember that side, look at there. You can pick a corner. I would actually start just, yeah, I think I'm going to start on a corner. I usually prefer to start on a corner. And the next round, with your, the color that your fringe is going to be, you're going to make one row of single crochet. And that is, of course, a stitch, a single crochet in every stitch, every stitch that's easy you can start anywhere let me just just have a look at that and you literally can start every anywhere i'll just start here in the corner and i'm going to do a single crochet and a single crochet and now this is in the color of the fringe i will of course have to do this in black but for your benefit i'm just doing this sample shall i call it a sample in this color love this color by the way shades of this with some shades of lilac. Ooh, lovely. So in every stitch, a single crochet. We are building a base for our fringe. So that is what it's going to look like. Go around once and I will meet you back here. Okay. So remember I did the single crochet row in this. I started you off in this. And obviously I pulled it out and did it in the color that it's supposed to be in. And look how nice that is looking. So now I'm going to just made a slip knot and I'm going to show you the second row of this. So this is how you're going to finish off. 
Let's just do this. This is how you'll be finishing off. I'm doing this in this lovely color so to make life easier for you. Single crochet. And single crochet. Now this is one of those one, two, three chains that forms a single a double crochet and I just it wants to make my life difficult and I just don't let it there we go and in the corner I make one single crochet and there is already a single crochet there so I'm just going to slip stitch in the top of that one now one chain to go up and I'm going to make a single crochet in the same stitch ideally I would like that stitch and that stitch I want it to be one two three single crochets so I'm just going to make this one single crochet and then start with a pattern but you'll quickly see how it's going to work. I hope it's going to end off like that. I know. Um, yes, because that's the corner. I want it to be like that on the corner. Okay, so it's going to be 30 chains. 3 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And it's going to be our fringe, remember? But that's half of it. So now I'm going to do three single crochets. In the very next stitch, I'm not skipping anything. In the very next stitch, make a single crochet. One, two, three single crochets. And then I make my next 30 chains. So three. Let's just focus. Come on, little camera, focus. So I'm going to make 30 chains, and in the very next single crochet, I'm going to work one, two, three single crochets. 30 chains, three single crochets. Don't skip anything. Okay, so let's just do that. One two three four and it mustn't split don't split on me four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 
25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And let's just go back here. 30. And in the very next chain, I do, not chain, in the very next stitch, I do a single crochet and another single crochet in the one next to that and another single crochet in the one next to that. Can you see what's starting to happen? Let me do another one and then I can lay it out for you. Okay, 30 chains. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. And let's get back. To the next stitch. And a single crochet. On top of the previous row, single crochet. And a single crochet. And the third single crochet. So let's just see. This is what it's starting to look like. So this is what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So now you're going to continue with this. Just turn the light slightly. You're going to make, I don't know what this, you see the light's too bright, then it looks very light, but now it is actually This beautiful orange. Okay. So we, you're going to continue. 30 chains, 3 single crochets. 30 chains, 3 single crochets. All along. All the way around. And when you get here, I'll meet you here. At this. So you're going to continue. We've started at the V or the tip. Go around over the shoulder, come back to the front or the back, whatever that one is, and I'll meet you there. I'm just going to share with you, look how beautiful this is looking. I'm doing it in black, of course. Isn't this beautiful? Anyway, so now I get to this point. I just want to share with you that what the plan is, is this. You know how we go along and we do. This one. Let me just do this one, a single crochet, one, one, I'm just doing it where the next one will be, and it's two, and it is three, then I'm going to do 30, but I'm just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, a 5. Obviously, you're going to do 30, just to show what's happening here. This is what's going to happen. You're just going to pick the next one, and it's going to be 1, 
two, three. You're not, we're not making corners. We're not doing anything like that. This is going to be 30. And one, two, three, four, five. And you continue to 30. Come back and you simply pick the next one. One. A single crochet. And another single crochet. And another single crochet. See, so you're not going to pay attention to any corners or anything. You're just working into every single crochet of the previous row. You're working. But obviously you do three. 30. Chain loop. Three. Single crochet. 30. Chain loop. Three. Single crochet. Okay, so then I get you on the other side. I just, I'm reaching this side now. Need to go and make another cup of coffee, and then I'll meet you on the other V point. Okay. Okay, now it's going to be easier. I have now done what I showed you to do, but in black. So I'm coming to the end. So let's see. So and there it is with the white in the background it looks makes it easier single crochet one two three and a quick 30 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and... Then we now there's already one, so I only need to do two. One and another. Well, there is no other one. Is there another one? I can't see another one. No, so I'm just going to do a slip stitch. But you see, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I can stop and tie this off and start the next round here. Because I will need to be at the top of a loop to start the next round. Or what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to slip stitch up uh, this side. Two, three, four. Five, six, and it is, where are you now, seven, it's so difficult to see with the black, seven, eight, Nine. I think it's ten. Eleven. Twelve. Yes. Thirteen, fourteen, come on, number fourteen, and number fifteen. So that brings me to half. So I have slip stitched 
Let me just do this on white. So this is what we've created. All these loops. Let me just uh, let me just move this so I can actually show you on the brown what we have created. It looks beautiful. Okay, now let me just take it like this, put it down so you can see. What we've created looks like this. It's these long 30 chain loops, even around the corner. I'm going to lift it up now so you can see. See, that's what we've created. And that looks marvelous. So now what I've done is I have gone up the side when I came uh, uh, to the end. I went up the side, just slip stitched up the side to the top because that's where we're going to go now. So let me just turn it and show you in that lovely orange, whatever we're going to call that color. Where are you now? Come, there we go. Don't pull out the. Don't. Come on. So what will happen is because I'm on that, it pulled out one. I think. Yes, it pulled out one. It mustn't pull out one. Just let me go there again. So you see, because you've slip stitched up the side of this one, it's a little bit thicker. But really, in the big scheme of things, you're not going to notice. You will not notice that. It's just continuity. Okay. Slip stitch. Now, let me use the this orange yarn. Just so we can see what is happening. Now the easy part. It's, we're getting ready for the cherry on the cake. Okay, I'm just going to make a little step knot. Like this, because that's how I always start. With a little slip knot. But now you're not going to start with a slip knot. Because you're already... You're already up there. But now because the black is very difficult to see. I'm just going to continue with this orange. For a few. Just so you get the pattern. Okay let's do this. So when you get to the top. It's 30 chains. So obviously 15 is the top center. When you reach 15 you're at the top center. So I'm going to put there, let me just get that to one side. I'm going to put there a single crochet and one. Don't split on me. And it's two chains. That's my one double crochet. And then one two yeah there we go and another one three double crochets just at the top now ten chains one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then I pick up the next loop. This is the next loop. And I'm not going to count 15. I'm going to just hold it like this and guess where 15 is, the halfway mark. And I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to make a double crochet into a stitch, sort of pegging it down there. 
spinning it so it can't move. So that's one double crochet. And then I don't have to do it in there. I can just go right next to it. One double crochet and another. So it's like a three double crochet cluster. Come on. There we go. See. And ten chains. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And pick up the next loop with your, just estimate where the center is. And yarn over, find that center stitch and push through. I don't just go through the loop. I actually want it anchored. So I'm going to make one double crochet. Now the next two double crochets can be through the loop. That doesn't matter. I just need to anchor it once. So I know it's not going to move position. And another ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten chains. And let me just do one more. And I find the next loop. Estimate where the top center is. Yarn over and through one of the stitches, through the center stitch that I imagine to be the center stitch, I make a double crochet. My first one and then just through the loop, add another two crochets, double crochets, one and another. And that's my three double crochet cluster. Now let's see what we've done. Let's just put it down so we can see what we have done, what we have created. So, pull it down a little so we can see this is what you've created. Remember, this is going to lie down. What, what if I do this, then the lighter color doesn't blow out. Otherwise, to see the black, I had to change the lighting. So this is what we're doing. That's why I'm going through the top, what I perceive to be the top center stitch to anchor it. Otherwise, it might move. You don't want that to move. You don't want your fringes to move. Because I'm just going to show you, remember, where we are in creating. Let me just quickly get this for you. This is my original. And here it is. What we're creating is... see where we are there's your loop and there's your there's your th three double crochet cluster your 10 stitches three double crochet cluster and because it's in that stitch it stays there it doesn't move you don't want it to move see this is what we're creating And then there's only one more row to go. So that's what we're creating. So three double crochet on the top, 10 chains, three double crochet. Remember to pin the first one through the center stitch. You can put all three through the center stitch if you wanted to. You don't have to. I did it this way. I think it's easier, but that's just me.
Okay, so now just continue with this in black. Well, in black. I'm doing it in black. You do it in whatever color you like or what you're busy with, what your project calls for. And then I will see you for the last round. We are nearly there. Okay. This looks like one big mess, but it look, is a beautiful mess. It's just because it's black. But let's see. Okay, now we are going to start the last row. So we have done three double crochet and ten, ten chains. Now what you do is you find the first one where I crawled up there, did my uh, three double crochet. Let me see if I can just put this light a little bit closer so that it is clearer. Yes, this is very, this is very bright. Okay, so now I'm going to just slip stitch into the top of this One, two, three, double crochet. Just slip stitch into the top. Okay, but shall I do it in the... Okay, let's do it in this orange because it's so... The black is difficult to see. Okay, there, let's do this. Little slip knot like always. Now, here I come around. And I'm supposed to connect this to this. So we are going to connect. I'm going to act as if this is my connecting black yarn. I'm going to pick the top of that double crochet. The top of that double crochet. And I'm just going to slip stitch. And I'm going to crawl one over, <laughs> slip stitch into the next one. Not slip stitch, like a single crochet. Like this. Because I need to get to the center of this one, two, three double crochets. Now I'm going to one. Two. So this is going to count as a, as one double crochet. Now I need ten stitches. So let's do the not ten stitches, ten chains. Let's do the ten chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then. Go and look for the very next, follow the little thread, it brings you to that three double crochet cluster and in the center I'm going to make a single double crochet, one double crochet, just through and make one double crochet. Is it focusing? There you go. There you can see it clearly. In the center of my three double crochets, I make one double crochet and ten chains. Here we go. Ten chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is the last row that is so exciting. Now, go and find the next one. Go and find the next. Just follow the previous 10 chain. Find the next three double crochet. And in the center, crochet one double crochet. There we go. Let's do one more and 10 chains. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And follow along. Get to the next three double crochets. Find the center one and make one double crochet in the center. And ten chains so that's so easy okay let's see what we've created here shall i show this on the white no no on the brown on the brown it i can do that because then i can lift it up let's do this quickly just let's get what is necessary get that out of the way so we could quickly show you what we are creating is this this is what we're creating see now let's just lean over let's just bring that up so that's what you're going to do on the top of your you've connected slipped one to the center made a single crochet and two chains that will count as a double crochet 10 chains one double crochet in the center of your three cluster double crochets one double crochet 10 stitches 10 chains one double crochet in the center 10 chains one double crochet in the center 10 chains one double crochet in the center and that's what you're going to do and that's the last row so i'm going to meet you here again okay it took me last night quite a few hours to finish just this row of three double crochets and 10 chains three double crochets and 10 chains and because it was black, you can imagine that gives you quite a bit of a headache, even though I've got good lighting. So now I'm going to do this last row and then I'll see you back here because this is just going to go on and on. You know, there's no nothing to look out for. You just follow the next three double crochet cluster, hit it in the center with a double crochet, 10 chains. There we go. See you at the end. There we go. Last row. And I'm going to connect to that. I've just connected. And then I pulled it out again to show you. One, two, three. But I'm going to put it there on that one. Because that looks better to me. I'm just going to put a slip stitch. That's, my, that's what served as my double crochet. And I'm just doing a slip stitch. And there you go. And that is done. So now it will be a little bit scrunched up. But what I do is, let me just move this camera slightly. What I do is, I'm going to work in that end. I actually just pull it a little bit like this. Pull it. One, two, three. And then I... It's like ironing it with your hand and then just just sort of telling them where to lie ironing it with your hand see like that right and that's all you do once I've washed it and whatever I don't ever need to do that again but you can see here this need this just needs to know where to go but once you wear it these uh, this three double crochet uh, cluster and a single crochet and this is what we've put on here in the end seems unnecessary. But the reason why I put it on is I found that these fringes needed weight to keep it down. Otherwise it tends to curl up. It wants to curl up because, I mean, you can pretty well decide after you've done your three single crochets and a 30 chain loop. Three single crochet, 30 chain loop. Oh, that looks fine. I'll just keep, leave it like that. Now, if that works for you, let me know. But I found 
that it curled up and it needed this bit of weight to keep it hanging and it gives a nice drape and even if this is a shame I called this <laughs> a no-name brand it's not a no-name brand what I meant was that this is well in South Africa this has been around the chick brand has been around I can remember as a little girl and I mean I'm now 51 so <laughs> what 40 years ago they were around it didn't look like this they've changed their logo and look a bit but they were around. You could go to Checkers and ShopRite. Those years it was ShopRite. And now they it's ShopRite and Checkers. So now um, you can still go and get some yarn there. And it is a double knit and four millimeter, which is my favorite. Um, the hook, not the yarn per se. Uh, Yes, one morning I was looking for black yarn and the wool shops were closed in lockdown and I just had to finish this one thing and I had to do it by a certain time and I think they there was an hour left between them opening and, um, well, Checkers was open so I quickly went into Checkers. I remembered then, oh, they sell wool, let me just pop in there and I got this black. Not this one, what I needed at the time. Anyway, so this is all I've got left of two balls of black. And this is all I've got left of four balls of 100 gram. What is this? Brown. It doesn't have a name. It just has a number. And I can't tell you. Let it focus. Is that a name? Rank Party? What? What is the name? Rank or is the name Party? Or, or is it that number? 70029? I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway. This is, more, well, it's definitely more brown than mine. Mine is more like a mud color. So, of the four brown balls and the two black balls I've still got left over that goes into, not stash, scrap. Stash to me is a full ball and more. Scrap is... When you've touched a ball like this, it's nearly a full ball and less. That's, to me, scrap. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get some more videos when I post it, please subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!